Hi guys, Dr. Gillard again. This is, I guess we're on part four now. I should start keeping track of this, I guess. Part four. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, Zanker's diverticulum. And we'll see where we lead here. Okay, Zanker's diverticula. Oops. Okay, what is it? Oh, AKA uh, pharyngeal pouch. It's a pathological outpouching of the posterior portion of the upper esophagus through an anatomical weak spot uh, called the Killian's Triangle. Killian's Triangle, which you should have had in gross two, because that's a very high yield piece of anatomy. But don't worry, we'll go over the anatomy in case you don't remember it or in case it wasn't covered. Uh, it's formed by the, Killian's Triangle is formed by the lower portion uh, of the inferior constrictor muscles. They're on the back side of the esophagus. The constrict the esophagus responsible for that peristalsic, peristaltic motion. Or no, they're not. They're just constrictor muscles. But anyway, the inferior portion of the constrictor, uh, these esophageal constrictors, have been given a special name. And that inferior portion is called the cricopharyngeus muscles, one on each side. And those are broken down even further. So there's an inferior pharyngeal constrictor, or I said the inferior pharyngeal constrictors uh, are specifically, or that crical pharyngeus, that's the inferior portion, right? That's going to be split into two components. There's an oblique portion and a transverse portion. So the superior portion uh, is this oblique portion. Standering, which is that big thick Board of Chiropractic Examiner's book, right? 3,000 pages. It calls it the pars oblique. Uh, and then it calls the transverse portion the pars uh, fundiformis. Okay, so those two uh, make up Killian's triangle. And they're. And what else do I need to say about them? Uh, where they come together can form a, a weak spot embryologically. And that weak spot can herniate. So let's look at this. This is a P to A view uh, of the esophagus here. There's the thyroid. Uh, so your laryngeal prominence would be about here on the other side. We're looking at the back. Okay, and here's the inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles here. They go all the way down to here, but they've been given a new name. They're cricopharyngeus muscles. Uh, and the cricopharyngeus muscles here have been given two parts. There's an upper part here which is called the oblique portion and then there's this transverse portion here and Killian's triangle is this this meeting this tissue that's right in between these okay and that can develop a weakness and so a Zenker's diverticula uh, if the Killian's triangle is big enough uh, and the esophagus also has too high of pressure when patients swallow, sometimes people have very high pressure generated by those muscles. They squeeze too hard or there's blockage, there's other things, but the pressure is too high. You can actually herniate the entire esophageal wall through that triangle. And that is a Zinker's diverticula. Uh, so here's a, a kind of a side view. Uh, and there's a patient swallowing and for whatever reason he has really high pressure. This squeezes really, really hard. And uh, during that high pressure of swallowing, it actually over time has caused a big hernia or a diverticula, as we call it in the intestine. It's a diverticula. And you can imagine this little thing, it's made of the entire intestinal wall. It can catch fluid. Uh, it, when you drink, it can catch food particles. It can cause all sorts of trouble. It can bleed. It can become inflamed like a diverticula. So it can be big trouble. It always favors the left side of the neck. In fact, you can even palpate it on some people. Typically, it happens over time. It doesn't happen all at once. Here's another picture. kind of shows the, uh, where this is located. But it usually comes out more over here because it favors, on, uh, favors the left side more. Here's a barium swallow showing it right there. So why does it occur? What's the pathophysiology? 
some research has demonstrated a high pressure is associated with uh, abnormalities of this cricopharyngeus muscle itself. Maybe it's uh, inflamed, maybe there's autoimmune attack against it. Uh, and it's been scarred up, it's gotten stiff from fibrosis. Sorry, those pauses are little drinks of water, which I'm not going to have time to edit out. Um, so the fibrosis does not allow the muscle to relax during swallowing, so you get a really high pressure uh, when the peristaltic wave moves over there. Um, sometimes ACDF surgery, anterior cervical disectomy fusion surgery, that's the Peyton Manning surgery, I call it. Very successful in him, but they can uh, weaken that that muscle. It's been associated with that as well, so iatrogenic. Uh, what are the patient's symptoms? Boy, they're pretty tough symptoms, right? It's hard to tell from other problems, but they're dysphagia, that choking, tough swallowing, uh, regurgitation, burping up stuff from the esophagus. You can have voice changes. Uh, aspiration, if you get in fluid uh, kind of belching up, it could go down into the larynx, down into the trachea. And that's not a good thing because you can get lung infections from that. You can have stinky breath because you can imagine if you get food particles down in that diverticula, they can get rotten, bacteria can eat them, and you have horrible breath. Stinky breath is called halitosis. You can also start having weight loss because you don't want to eat because it hurts. So, so clinical findings, there's uh, the, the voice sign. So that's one probably should have put a star right there. Hey, I could do a star right here for next quarter. Bam, star. Boy's sign. Uh, in some patients, you can actually palpate that diverticula uh, if it starts to wrap around to the front of the neck a little bit. It'd be more the lateral part of the neck. But some of them can wrap around. It actually makes like a splashing, gurgly sound. You can, if, if there's fluid in it, you can kind of make it gurgle. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to tell from a lymph node or something. But barium swallow makes the diagnosis. You order barium swallow and you can see it. I like this picture. We already showed you that, I think. Epidemiology this diverticula uh, is in about 0.06% of the population, so it's pretty rare. Uh, boards seem to like this stuff, though. Problems usually arise as an older person's problem, seventh and eighth decade of life. Twice as many women, uh, men have it than women. Complications, about 1% of these uh, can morph into squamous cell carcinoma, probably from the chronic infection in the region. And sometimes they can ulcer and cause, here's another vocabulary word for you, hematop. Uh, Hematopsis, spitting up, hemoptysis, hemop, like mop, hemoptysis, spitting up or coughing up blood. Uh, and it could erode uh, as well, which is not a good thing. You can get an infection in the region. Can you get peritonitis from that? Ooh, good, good question for the test. No, because that's up in the upper part. It's by the upper esophageal sphincter this occurs. So no, you can only get... If the lower esophageal sphincter ruptures down there, you could get perito peritonitis. That's intraperitoneal. This is not. Uh, we said this already. Can catch food. You can aspirate it. Uh, what do you do for it? Patients with large and symptomatic sinker's diverticula should be offered treatment. There's surgical procedures. You can do it openly or through an endoscope to reduce it, sew it up so it stops catching food. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's an overnight procedure. It's done through the left side of the neck usually. All right, let's. Uh, we're going to start a new section now, so let's cut this tape off here. In fact, a lot of this we're going to do a stomach anatomy and physiology and endocrinology review. So, the endocrinology. This is an endocrinology cast, so class so you're going to have to know some of this stuff. Uh, it should be all review though, uh, maybe except for some of the hormones uh, down here. So we'll put this in another tape. Okay, see you in that one.